starts. Just one question about the U.S. selection. Um, what do you think about that? And do you think it's important for the future and the democracy of the U.S.A.? Probably. <laughs> <laughs> you mean to speak for an hour? <laughs> Come on. Come on. Uh, and there's, we all have hundreds of thoughts about the election. Everybody does. And, you know, it's almost become trite. Everybody has their own talking points and all that. Um, I try to narrow it down sometimes to think about, uh, we all know that, you know, one candidate did this and that and the other. Uh, none of it very good uh, as far as uh, being a criminal and that sort of thing. But uh, we all know what he does. And so I try to figure out, you know, exactly why do people vote for him? What, what do they exactly think he's going to do for them? I, mean, I, I was just watching his rally uh, in Pennsylvania, and all the college kids were behind him uh, with red hats and that sort of thing. And I just wonder if they know that uh, he, you know, had to pay money because of his rent practices in New York. Uh, that he was a racist in that sense. Uh, he was, he had to pay money because of Trump University being a fraud. He lost all kinds of money with casinos back east. There's Trump stakes. I mean, you could go on and on. I mean, I don't know if they, and then, so I say, what does he say or do that they, want to vote for him. They must think he's a strong guy. Or this is the biggest whiner that ever walked the face of the earth. I mean, he's like the poorest example of a fifth grade bully I've ever seen. I mean, I, I just, would you want your kids to act like he does? Would you want your kids to make the excuses he does? Everybody's come after me, I'm, you know, everybody, this, that, and the other, I'm doing this for you, poor me, poor me, whine, whine, whine. And you, you look at it, it's, you know, like the election that he lost, uh, and he continues to lie about it. Of course, all the sycophants around him know that he's uh, full of crap and a liar, but their interests are for themselves anyway. But I, I look at it, and I look at my grandchildren, and I wonder uh, if my uh, grandchildren are playing in a soccer game or a basketball game, do I want him to be their mentor, they want them, him to be them, their example of how to act if it doesn't go well. Like everybody in this room, you know, hopefully all of us taught our children, you're not going to win all the time, but when you win, be humble. When you lose, do it with grace. We all do that. He doesn't do that. And so you wonder, all the people who support him, would they want him to teach their kids? So I got to tell my grandchildren that I guess if they want to be like Trump, I got to say, hey, no, today you're going to win because there's no way you can lose. And if you do lose, it was rigged against you. So don't buy it. Don't buy it. You got to figure out who to blame. You know, blame those referees because they were against you. Blame your teammates because they didn't play well and they should have maybe given you the ball more. Uh, but you don't have to accept that. And just keep saying it. Just keep saying it. And you know, to the little kids, you know what's really good about it? You keep saying it over and over, and all of a sudden, your life will be a little bit easier because you'll become delusional. Because you'll actually believe some of the lies you've been telling yourself. And then, you don't have to worry about shame and guilt, because when you're delusional, there's no shame. There's no guilt. And life becomes so wonderful. And that's those are the kind of things I think about when I, th I think him. He's a pathetic individual, a small, small man who has to make everybody around him smaller so that he thinks he's going to be bigger. And isn't that the same thing we told all our kids in grade school? You know, that, that's not how you act. It's not what you do. But there's those college kids behind him cheering. And I want to know why. Do they think he's going to get him a job? You know, there's no policies, but we're going to get after Kamala Harris because somebody says she wasn't specific. 
She's been so specific compared to him, it's ridiculous. I just heard it again. I got his policies today. It's going to be great. It's going to be the greatest economy ever, just like it was before. People call me all the time and tell me, oh, the taxes, oh, we're going to take care of that. It's not a problem. We're going to take care of that. There's nothing there except jibber-jabber, and, and they're students. They're listening to him. I don't understand what's going on in their heads. So he, he's pathetic. He's small. Uh, he's a whiner. We all know that. But you wouldn't have him babysit your kids. You wouldn't hire him. If you had a small business, you want that man in your business? There's no way. But were you going to vote for him for president? Because he's strong? I mean, Kamala Harris whipped his ass in the debate, just obviously. And he's running ever since. He doesn't want any part of her. Because as she said before, she's eaten many of his type for lunch as an attorney general, as a prosecutor. He's, he's a small fry compared to some of the people she's gone after. And he, he knows it. So all he can do is cut people down you know, and do what he does. We've all seen all that kind of stuff. The ones that you can be even more angry about, because he's sick. He's a damaged man. He grew up the biggest wannabe there ever was in New York, right? We all know that. He wanted to be in the inner circle, but they laughed at him his whole life. Just like Obama made fun of him at that dinner, and he was about to melt. That angered him so bad, uh, it was scary. But he, he was never accepted. He was treated like a fool, like a clown. And now he's able to just give the finger to the world because of his position now. And that's what he's doing. He's getting back at everybody because he's so small, he's got to go after everybody, just like we all know the generals and Mike Pence and all that. We, we've all heard that before. But those people around him, you know, the, the Grahams, the Cruises, the Hollies, the Meadows, McCarthy, McConnell, all those guys, all older white men, it so happens to be, uh, they know he's an ass. They said it. I'm not saying that I think they think that. They've told us that ever since, you know, 2015, 16, all that kind of thing. I mean, you know, they've, they've called him... Uh, a xenophobic, a religious bigot, a racist, uh, unfit for office, on and on and on. Their words. But they're right there with him. Do they not know that they have children and grandchildren probably that are going to lose freedom if this guy is elected? I'm not talking about a policy. I'm talking about the idea of our country. Freedom is what we're all about. And the experiment has been going on for, what, 250 years? And these people are willing to front for him, knowing full well how full of crap he is. And they have children and grandchildren that will have to live in a world that is going to go downhill if this guy is elected. He doesn't know anything. He's not imagined. He doesn't care. He's not interested. He didn't even want to be president in 16. He just, it was a scam. It was, you know, an investment for, for him. I, what, what are they thinking? Well, we know what they're thinking. They want their power. They want their position. Uh, you know, people like Cruz are, are pathetic because we know that that's why they're there, because they've said things about him, their real feelings, but they don't care. They think we're all stupid, that we're, we don't remember what they said, you know, that kind of thing. So uh, it's just such a dangerous situation because, you know, the fact that he's damaged and now he's become delusional you just listen to him. It's, it's embarrassing. And he wanted to get after Joe Biden because he would flub up some words here and there. Uh, now the danger follows the delusion. And our kids and grandkids are going to have to live with what this guy puts out there. So I'm just hoping that people, uh, you know, people who are already sold on him for whatever reason, I can't figure it out. Uh, the ones that stay home and don't vote are the ones that worry me because we need everybody to vote and I hope that they won't stay home that they'll understand that this guy is a scam artist he's great at it I give him credit for that he's the best ever best ever but he makes you want to puke can I stop <laughs> how do you really feel about it? <laughs> somebody tell it to somebody hit me somebody say pop that's bullshit or, yeah, what about this? What did he do? Tell me something he did. You know, I mean, one thing I left out was, well, just think about this. You'd want this guy 
you'd vote for him or you'd want him to be a friend or you'd go have a beer with him. He called COVID a hoax. Probably a couple hundred thousand people died because he tried to ignore it. Isn't that a disqualifier? I mean, for me, it was a disqualifier when he stood up and went like this and made fun of the physically challenged person during the election. What grown man, emotionally damaged like he is, would, would do that, would make fun of a physically handicapped? We, we put our kids in detention in their rooms if they made fun of somebody like that. Yet we're going to vote for him for president? Are you crazy? He said it was a hoax. And everybody that comes close to him, he makes them liars. He makes them lose their souls. I, I still remember to this day, uh, what's the guy, the economic, he's with the economics, Larry Kudlow. Larry Kudlow actually said to cover his butt, Trump's butt, he goes, we've got this now. We've got it, quote unquote, look it up, airtight in the very beginning. We got it airtight. And a million people in our country died. Probably a couple hundred thousand that didn't need to if we'd have started it quicker and he'd have done anything. But he called it a hoax because he didn't want it to be there. It would, hurt his, it would hurt his presidency. It would hurt his popularity. So he's dumb enough to think it's going to go away. <laughs> that he can just wish it away. So he's ignorant and he's malevolent because he knew it was there and they told him it was there and he didn't give a shit. So I said I'd stop. We didn't, we didn't drink enough bleach. Right. Well, I, yeah. Bleach. I was wondering, uh, you know, given that we are, given that we are in a politically tumultuous time, and uh, especially when you've got young players from abroad uh, who are having this as their first impression of the country, the political tumult that's happening right now, I'm wondering how you manage a basketball team given everything that's going on and given the, the threats that are posed environment as a whole as well. Well, yeah, I think, you know, we talk about it a lot. Uh, whether they want to hear it or not, I talk about it a lot. <laughs> uh, but uh, they're aware of everything that's going on. Uh, you know, we bring in speakers to talk to them about uh, various aspects of our society because I think it's important for them. I think it brings them closer when they're thinking about ideas bigger than basketball. Basketball is pretty boring when you think about, you know, life in general and all the things that are going on in our worlds in our world, but uh, they're also very young. And you try to think back to that age, you're, you're pretty self-consumed. You're, you're a striver. You're trying to do well, you know, whether you're in law school or you're an athlete or you're a musician, whatever you are, you're trying to be successful. And that's most of your main for focus. So it's not all the chaos and everything. They see it, but uh, it's not debilitating or anything like that. It doesn't make it harder to put a team together. Okay, I gotta, I gotta go. <laughs> I gotta go. <laughs>